What's up YouTube? This is HDD Recovery Services. Today we're gonna talk memory cards. Um, I know a lot of you um, might have gotten to this video because of my other video and uh, I apologize. That's That was done like really really long time ago. I didn't know exactly what I was doing in terms of uh, filming and what I should do, what I shouldn't do. So I, I constantly listen to your feedback and I uh, decided to redo uh, the case and explain a couple of other things that might be involved in the process. So uh, let's say you have a memory card and you've been shooting some um, images with it or shooting video with it and uh, all of a sudden it becomes inaccessible. What do you do? Um, well, uh, the brutal truth is that uh, in like 95% of the times there's not much that you would be able to do about that problem uh, and the reason for that is that the problem is on the physical level with the device uh, no software will be able to detect the device that doesn't get detected by your computer so if you plug it in and your memory card is not detected um, it needs to be taken apart and uh, worked directly through uh, the memory components that are on there now, uh, there are cer certain types of memory cards that I wanted to go over with you today to explain some of the things that may be involved in data recovery process. Now, what I have right here is a 16 gigabyte uh, good quality Transcend memory card. This is an authentic Transcend and uh, usually I can determine whether or not it's authentic by this yellow uh, lock, um, also the image on the label is always perfectly straight and it's really crystal clear uh, it's not blurry it's not pixelated and the um, color spectrum is really good and everything looks really sharp on the back side there's also uh, different um, etchings on it um, CE and some part numbers and uh, also where the card was made and um, maybe some other stuff but in this specific uh, case that's all there is on it. Uh, when we open up the device, this one has already been worked at, so that's why it comes apart like that. Uh, we will find that there is either going to be one or two memory components uh, and a printed circuit board. The printed circuit board in our case uh, has a silicone motion controller and uh, unlike on the counterfeit card which I have here, the controller is exposed. The part numbers can be read. On the counterfeit cards, usually controllers are epoxied, uh, the labels are really blurry, the tab is made out of some white plastic, there's no writings on the back, and uh, there's also no markings on chips in most of the cases. I'm going to set this aside. So what we have here is one memory component that is in BGA-152 packaging. Now, in order for us to recover data from this chip, we have to remove this memory component, put it into this socket reader, plug that socket reader in and extract the raw data from there. Once that's done, we can begin a reassembly of the structure, which can take some time in some cases, but uh, that's as far as the process goes. Now, in some cases, uh, the design uh, of the memory card doesn't always have a printed circuit board on the inside and the design that I'm talking about is a monolithic design here's what I have um, today and here's what I will demonstrate today is actually the procedure that we uh, will have to perform in order to just get access to the unit in this case it's not so easy and uh, I'll explain why this unit does not have external memory so uh, how do we get access to what's on there. If we plug this device into the card reader, uh, it either hangs, uh, get does not get determined, uh, uh, sorry, detected, uh, or demonstrates uh, that there's nothing on the card. Even with data recovery software, we can't see any content. Uh, it reports like zero capacity, a bunch of reasons for this device to trap the inf information on it and leave you hanging pretty much uh, if you pay attention how both sides look you'll see that one side is glossy 
the side that's got the connections and the other side is got more of a matte finish now the side that's got um, connections on it underneath that glossy acrylic layer there is a printed circuit board we need to expose that printed circuit board and actually uh, solder wires to specific positions now these positions are not always the same They're, they vary very frequently and there's literally like hundreds of different designs if not more um, from varying from different models of the same manufacturer to different manufacturers to no brands to branded cards there's just so many different kinds and uh, uh, there is now there is no th this is this is not something that the manufacturer will ever disclose they will not disclose a pinout for us they will not disclose uh, which signals go where so what we have in our um, knowledge base so to speak we use but that doesn't cover every single case so as long as we've got a schematic for this device we will be able to communicate with the memory as long as the um, ground and power is not short ground and power is shorted it's a completely different story now to, in order to determine that uh, there are two pins that are here that if you look at the line uh, two of them are slightly taller Okay, so they come out a bit further. That's your ground and power. If you take um, a volt, uh, like a multimeter, set it to continuity test, and one probe goes on one end and another probe goes on the other, if there is no beeping sound, if they're not crossed, if they're not uh, arching, uh, the controller is not shorted, and we can begin tapping into the memory itself. So uh, let's uh, try to get this one done and see if we can com communicate with the memory. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and uh, if you have any questions or uh, if you want to post comments below, feel free to do that. If you're interested in data recovery, subscribe to our channel, like this video and we'll definitely be coming back with more content.
our unit connected to the reader we're gonna power up the software and uh, here is our reader element first thing that we're gonna do is read ID of the device and if we get the ID that means the soldering work is good so we're just gonna quickly reconnect the unit and hit ID button there we go we got two crystals and the ID shows up properly for both of them so off the get-go it gives us some options because this is just a quick demonstration uh, we're gonna pick the the first one there is and select OK now that we're selected the configuration fi file we gonna power on the device and uh, we're gonna access the dump viewer to see if we can view the content uh, of that device live and if we go into bitmap view we're gonna scroll through and locate some portion with the data in it uh, where we can see the noise because there we're gonna have areas uh, that are spare area which are vertical lines and vertical lines will show us how clean the reading comes out from the reader and as you can see uh, those vertical lines don't really have any inconsistencies so it's pretty it's pretty clean read we can just read it as is and once the extraction of raw data is completed we can begin uh, determining what chain of uh, data conversion elements had been used in order to reconstruct that data and put it into a structure 